Since we don't have a working mic on the stage, this is the way we're going to MC everyone tonight. <laughs> we have a new hashtag, Awkward, awkward Talks. Yeah. So, uh, as you can tell, Jason and I are pretty, pretty friendly. And uh, well, we will be by the end of this talk. And, so. and I really like Jason, and he's a really good red team pen tester and author and awkward hugger. So, uh, join me in welcoming Jason Street. Thank you, everybody. Chris, is there any way that you could put the mic on and I give my talk like that through the yes. whole thing? Because that would be awesome. That would be okay. so awesome. But, but probably totally awkward for everybody in the audience, so maybe not. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, let's get right into it. I am not a lawyer. Uh, I've actually played one before, but no, I am not a lawyer. Uh, but I do know how to Google online. Oh, look, they're going to do a countdown clock for me. Uh, so uh, we already told you how successful that was. Uh, but yes, so I am not a lawyer, but I know how to Google. So this is my legal disclaimer. Um, I will be, uh, I will tell you some of the really bad things I've done and, and horrible ways that I've done them and stuff, you know, and uh, mostly all of it was legal. And, uh, and you're going to ask yourselves, like, wow, that's a horrible person. How can he do something like that? And I promise you, I will never try to steal from you, kill you, or ruin you financially unless you pay me first. So, when you hear me tell you about the bad things that I've done, it's like, just remember the kittens. I'm adorable, okay? I am not the bad guy. So, uh, always keep that in the back of your mind, because there'll probably be a couple of stops here where you'll be going like, what a jerk. Uh, which is probably true in most cases, but at least I'm a good jerk. So, that's got to count for something. Uh, so, let's uh, go to my talk here. Hold on, someone went through the whole trouble of making this really flashy for me. And I'm going to get that going as soon as I find out how mouses work. There we go. It's worth every penny of the $500,000 I spent to make that happen. It's like, uh, so that's the name of my talk, Breaking in Bad. Uh, basically, uh, you hear a lot of talks from a lot of social engineers about what they do and how they've done it. And I've done several of those talks. So I decided to do something a little bit different. How about if I give you a talk where instead of just telling you what I've done, I actually show you some of the bank surveillance footage. I actually let you hear and listen to me as I'm on the engagement, talking to the uh, client, victim, slash, whatever. Uh, and you get to actually hear that. Uh, so that's what sort of this talk is going to be about. I call this my desserts and vegetables talk because I start off with dessert, and then I end it with the vegetables, and that will be made abundantly clear uh, as we go down the uh, line. Um, I don't waste my name on, on, on uh, waste my time on who I am. It's like uh, that's what Google's for. Uh, so, uh, but just know that I am not a just a red team uh, pen tester. I am a blue team person as well. So I'm more of a purple teamish uh, kind of person. Uh, and I will not break into a company and just say, "Here's a report of all the bad things I do." My talk is a little bit different. It's like I actually uh, when I go into an engagement. I break in, destroy everything, but then I leave for the building for two minutes. I come back and I talk to every person I compromised right then and there. Explain to them why I was bad. Explain to them why the situation was wrong and what they should look out for next time to help educate them. So I like, I spend the last day of the engagement getting caught. I do my best to get caught because that creates teachable moments for them. And we'll definitely go into that a little bit later. So first of all, I hate APT. I hate the word APT except for when we're trying to play the drinking game. So the big thing for me is APT stands for we got fished, we got stockholders to appease, it was advanced, it was persistent, it was threatening, what could we do? Basically. It's like when you tell me APT is a phishing email, when you tell me that it's APT and you had SQL injection on your website for three years reported and not fixed, that is not APT. That's getting home. So what I do is say, we got to stop talking about APT. we got to stop talking about the low-hanging fruit. You know, because they're going after the low-hanging fruit. I'm not going to tell you how to attack people by low-hanging fruit, okay? My fruit's already on the ground, okay? Some of this fruit's taking root and creating another tree. Fix that stuff first, instead of just going after the low-hanging fruit. So what I do is, I do bad. I'm just bad. Basic, adorable destruction. 
I don't try to come in with a big advanced technique and stuff, you know, and a lot of research and recon to come after you. It's like I don't try to go in and, and try to figure out what I can compromise and get to. No, I'm just going to F you up the best possible way. That's just how I roll. But let me give you some indicators on someone being bad. Usually, uh, recon mode is only about two hours of Google and the victim's own website. I've never used a full two hours on a client site ever to make a successful compromise. I've never used a full two hours. So an hour and 45 minutes is the longest I've ever used to create a successful compromise on a person uh, site. Uh, two, SE mode is usually walking to the victim's location and winging it. Note, sometimes without doing number one. Uh, number three, bondage mode is basically plugging into a device to the victim's computer or network, uh, sometimes with their help, uh, not because of any particular thing, but just because I think it's funny to have them help me destroy them. Um, <laughs> I'm a horrible person. Um, uh, four, that's supposed to be there. Um, uh, five, profit, you know, because, like I said, they pay me for this. Uh, and there we go. So um, these are the best approaches I've used to be bad. Uh, one is a tech repair guy, delivery, job applicant, customer, wander. I call that my passive roles. That's where I'm asking you for help. That's where I'm asking you to help me out because I'm trying to do something. Uh, my most one I use is the tech repair guy because I used to do desktop support, so I can do that. Never go into a situation posing as a plumber unless you know how to plumb, okay? <laughs> Because you never know when it's going down. So, yeah, we've had this pipe working out for weeks. Man, I'm so glad you're here. Come and start snaking. You know? So I go in as a tech repair guy, usually. Uh, number two is the auditor, executive, policy enforcement. Uh, that's where you got to wear a suit and tie. And trust me, if you make me wear a tie on an engagement, I will utterly call so much pain on your operation. You will definitely get your money's worth because you made me effing wear a tie. Okay? That doesn't play. That's where I do my authoritative role. That's why I'm already pissed off because I'm in a tie. So I do the authoritative role. I need to get into the server room and stuff in order to finish the inspection. Is it a surprise inspection? What part of surprise inspection do you not understand? Get me in the server room or you're going on the report to now. I don't have time to play around with this crap. And that's the authoritative role. Remember, I'm adorable. Kittens. So it's like, so that's the authoritative role. Three is the crazy, off-the-wall personalities. Not recommended, but totally fun and usually work. Um, I've broken into a palace hotel in the south of France uh, wearing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle pajama bottoms, barefoot, and a t-shirt. <laughs> it's awesome. It's like, I actually finished the compromise, go up to the guy who's running the, uh, the uh, room service, and as soon as I get there, I'm like, I'm not... I'm not supposed to be here. <laughs> I, where am I? I, I? I shouldn't be here. Um, I shouldn't be. How do I get out of here? And he puts me into, I kid you not, puts me into the first elevator that's right next to him, which is the employee elevator that puts me up to the first floor in their business corporate area behind the front desk. So as I'm walking out of that, unescorted, I get to see an open office with a computer unlocked and hotel keys. It was a full staff hotel. They provided everything. It was awesome. So that's how that works. That's my off the wall. Now, another thing I'm going to do for the uh, dessert part is I'm going to tell you stories. Three different stories from three different countries, three different kinds of financial institutions with all three different roles. And I chose different kinds of financial institutions in different countries so you would understand one unifying thing. You're screwed. It's like, uh, it's like these people know that they're supposed to protect the money. These people know that bad guys are coming after them to get the money. Let's see how that worked out well for them, okay? So we're going to start with the first one as the tech, the passive role. Uh, this is uh, this was like so an epically crazy story that I've told so many times. They actually turned it into a comic strip. Uh, it's a, a little embellished. It's like you know, but still, it's pretty freaking awesome. Uh, of me going into uh, the uh, Beirut Bank, uh, the uh, Beirut Bank in Lebanon, and breaking into them. Basically, I was asked to go in um, and see what I could do. They wanted to see if I could actually make online damage 
from physical access. This is one example in their main office. Uh, the top left corner, the guy sees me on the person's computer because their computer was unlocked. I walk straight in without no knowledge of anything. I sit down, then they see me taking a picture of my iPad of the unlocked screen showing that I just compromised the machine. And he makes the mistake of asking me, what am I doing? So the very last picture in the lower right hand corner, you will see him now standing up while I'm behind his computer, working on his computer, and then taking a picture of it and leaving. <laughs> so um, that worked out well. But let's get into the main thing. They wanted me to show how I could do an online compromise. So I needed to do a wire transfer. What do I need? I need five things for a wire transfer. I needed a user ID. I needed a password. I needed their smart card because they do two-factor authentication with smart cards because they're secure. They're a bank. People try to rob them. And I need a machine that actually uses that smart card. So I need one of their Sun Oracle computers. And then I also need uh, network access to their internal network so I could do all that. So with knowing that I need those five things, I told them they need to give me uh, access to three different branches. I was not aware of any of the branches that I was going to. They drove me to them blind. Well, not blindfold or anything, because that'd be creepy in Lebanon. But it's like they actually just drove me there. Just I, I didn't know anything about it. And I walked in, and let's see what I did. Because you can tell this is their bank surveillance footage. Within the moment of walking into the bank in the upper left-hand corner to being behind the teller line to get ready to install my malware, two minutes and 22 seconds. From walking in for the first time to having full authorization in the bank, two minutes and 22 seconds. I walked in, straight down the hallway like I knew exactly where I was going, which I didn't, but that's never stopped me before. Sometimes it's led me to dead ends, which is always, you know, uncomfortable. But, uh, but usually, like this one, it led me to the manager's office. The manager had someone in his office, which was even better. So I said, I just stand out there right outside his office. I stand out there for about 30 seconds. After that 30 seconds has passed, I walk to the very next executive's office. Executive saw me go into the uh, manager's office and talk to the manager, right? Because why would a person just stand out someone's door and stuff, you know, without talking to them? That's creepy. And so I go into the, uh, the executive's office and I say, hey, I'm with the help desk from uh, headquarters. We're trying to work on the machines. We need to work on the GPO policies to make sure the USB rights are properly installed because of the fact that they're uh, having a TCP reset stack problem and stuff, you know, with flux capacitors. It's not working right. So uh, let, me, uh, let me plug this USB drive in. Don't worry about the rubber ducky on it and uh, test your uh, security. Uh, so that's good. So I, didn't, I plug it in, the command prompt comes up, it's like, oh, that's strange. Let me take my camera out and take a picture of that. There we go, document it. And I went out. I'm now golden because now everybody else in the bank has seen me go to the manager's office and they see me work with the lady uh, executive in her office. I go to the next place, to the next one down the hall, right by the teller office. I told her I'm with, I'm with the uh, desktop support from headquarters. We're working on the machines. We need to look on some stuff. She's like, I need to go look at the teller machines. I need to do the, the assessment and stuff, you know, because the TCP reset problems are really causing problems with our GPO policies. We need to make sure the USB is not interfering with the magnetic storm, so we got to do that. So, uh, so she goes, and she uh, lets me behind the teller line. And I want you to understand something. This was a high-value target. Not just because of the fact that I was trying to commit, you know, an online, you know, criminal act. It's also because that wonderful gentleman right there who's depositing money, it's like was depositing $250,000 in cash at the time I was doing this. So if I got lazy and just wanted to take the money, I could have done that. But, you know, I never do anything the easy way, right? Look at my life. So it's like I decided to go in and actually start uh, doing the rest of my uh problems of my compromise. So I started plugging in the devices. I started going after the data. And one of the things I did, please know I had plenty of time to do it. I was there for 20 something minutes without getting stopped. The only area I was not allowed to get into, I kid you not, was the bank vault. And I tried. So, oh, I need to go check the bank vault to make sure there's no network jacks and stuff, you know, because we don't want electromagnetic stuff, you know, coming out through the bank and stuff, you know, or a computer going in and compromising your money. And he's like, well, we don't have any connections to these other banks. Really? Are you sure? Maybe I should go look and ensure. No, 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 it's okay. Yeah, but I really want to go look. Come on, let me look. And he's like, no, he wouldn't let me do it, so darn. So, um, and then what we do is... Uh, I actually was spinning around in the chair at that point because I'm getting bored now at this point. Please also note one important thing. During this whole compromise, I'm wearing khaki pants, a shirt, 
a DEF CON leather jacket <laughs> and red Thundercat Timmy shoes the whole entire time. Seems legit, right? It's like, so yeah, so I did that. See that guy in the slap, snappy sweater vest? I love him. He was awesome. He wanted to help me get the issues. He wanted to help me fix the problems. So he gave me his user ID. He gave me his pass card, uh, his password. But I needed a smart card. So, you know, he helped me with that too. That was nice. It's like, uh, so I now have three of the five things that I needed. So I'm sending the computer and a network. The uh, problem with this one was actually the manager. This is one of the things that made me the saddest. Because the manager comes out and he asks what I'm doing. He thinks everybody else verified him. Everybody thinks that he verified me. I tell him what I'm doing with the help desk. And he immediately goes and says, oh, we got a problem with one of the computers. Can you come and look? Luckily, I'm not a plumber. So yes, I go in and I start helping him with the computer. I start looking around. And I'm like, you know what? We'll get you a new computer. This is like, this is really bad. It's like, uh, we'll just go get you a new one from the office. His eyes lit up like Christmas. <laughs> and he was like, uh, we got a problem with the scanner. Can you come over and look at the scanner? So I go over and look at the scanner. And I'm like, you know what? We can get you a new scanner. This one's like obviously needs to be repaired. We'll take this one and, and take it back. I'll come back in about 30 minutes or something like that and take it from you. And they're like, oh, we got a problem with the monitors. And finally, I said, you know what? Guess what? I wasn't supposed to say nothing, okay? But headquarters is actually doing a whole refurb of all the branch offices with new equipment because we're upgrading our whole infrastructure. And you are so freaking cool. I like you. It's like, you know what we're going to do? I'm putting you on the top of the list. You will have all brand new equipment within the next two weeks. It's like, it'll be all good. He was so happy. <laughs> I felt so horrible. Because, once again, I said, I do security awareness engagements. So, I pwned them so hard, I actually had to wait till the branch closed so we could get all the employees together to tell them how bad this is by an executive from the company translated in Arabic. I speak no French or Arabic, it's like in just this accent, not usually this war, so um, he had to translate to make sure they understood fully exactly how horrible they were pwned. And so as, he's, as I'm talking and the guy's translating, the bank manager holds his hand up like he's in class. <laughs> And I go, yes. And he's like, um, the, the computers are, are we, are we still getting the computers? And I felt so horrible. I was like, no. I'm a bad person. I was lying to you. I felt like I was kicking a puppy. It was bad. So I felt really bad about that. And amazingly, that's not the worst thing I've done. So it's like, so, so yeah, so I've got my things. I've got the three things I needed from that, that bank branch, right? So they drive me to another branch, which is awesome. Except for when you don't know, you know, can't read the signs. It was a glass building, and the sign said uh, something in French and Eric. I had no idea what it said. I thought it meant like the next door. So I go down the sidewalk to the next door, and there's, there's the bank branch, and I see uh, people and tellers, and I'm like honing in on a person I'm about to compromise, and my driver starts honking his horn frantically. Okay, well, this is Lebanon traffic. There's a lot of horn honking communication, so I couldn't tell if it was up or not, but guess what? He was trying to signal me. So luckily, I heated that little thing in the back of my head, and I went over to talk to him. So I get up to him, and he's frantic. He's like, no. And I'm like, what do you mean? That's not our bank. <laughs> And I was like, what do you mean? The other one had a door. It said, wait to be buzzed in. I'm like, oh, my bad. <laughs> it's like, so, so I went back over to the proper branch. It's like, and I waited to get buzzed in. Um, and then after I did that, I walked in, went straight in like I knew where I was going. It led to a break room. It's like, and so that was a good thing because I went and got a cup of water drank poning people is thirsty work so I had a little bit of water and then I walked into the teller behind the teller line without saying a word I talked to no one I did not say hello I did not say where I was from I just calmly walked in behind the teller line while this guy is doing his business going about work totally legit because you know I'm adorable and I actually walked out with their computer <laughs> 
So now I have a user ID, I have a password, I have a smart card, and I have a computer. So we go to the next branch. And what do I say? Hey, I need to go check the network closet and make sure everything's working and stuff you know because the flux capacitors aren't working with the bogon crystals and stuff you know and we got to get the lithium going, right? You know, I babble a lot. So that happened. Online compromise can come from a physical source. I don't have to bypass your firewall if I can bypass your receptionist. It's like I say that all the time. So that's how that happened. So that was me doing a passive uh, engagement. Let's how, how would we do something where I've got to be more authoritative? This was a state treasury in the United States, which you would think they would be good about, you know, wanting to keep things secure since, you know, there's a little bit of money in some states, you know. This wasn't Florida, I'll tell you that. But, uh, sorry. Uh, so what, what we go through there is we had co successfully compromised. There's a guy from Florida really pissed at me right now, sorry. It's like, so we, what we did was we go in there and they were already compromised really bad internally. But one of the things that the unionized uh, IT support people were saying was, uh, well, you'd have to actually break into our building and get into that internal network access. It wasn't just coming from the outside. That wasn't a uh, cool test. So the security company actually subcontracted was like, hey, Jason, you want to come in and break into a state treasury? My response is, oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's like, so I go out there and I start looking at their headquarters. By golly. Not even joking, not even being facetious, because I usually am. It's like they had great security. There was like a bulletproof glass. It was like uh, tinted. It was like it was hard to see in. There was a receptionist. It's like they were like uh, with a, a security guard. It was like they were like they were not playing around. I did find a compromise to get it into their headquarters. If you went down to the uh, to the basement, there was a cafeteria. Right to the cafeteria, there was a storage area. And in that storage area, there was a dumbwaiter that was not sealed off that actually went into the first floor room that was not also sealed off because uh, it was a refurbished building. But I did look in that dumbwaiter, and there were spiders, so therefore I could not you know, proceed. Um, <laughs> so therefore, that, that place was now impenetrable because you know, no flamethrower was allowed on scope. Um, and that's another thing that brings up something, scope. Scope is a tricky thing, right? Because we all can agree that an attacker scope is this. I mean, not even like this. It's this, right? If I could go like that, I would. That's the attacker scope. And the client hires you as a pen test. And they say, hey, we want you to attack us like an attacker does. And you're like, yeah, I can do that. I happen to be an attacker. And it's like, okay, that's great. Go for it. But we only work, you know, Monday through Friday. So, attack is like an attacker would. And I'm like, sure, okay. He's like, oh, wait, but uh, we can't do it after 9 p.m. because that's out of our service window. And I'm like, okay. And they're like, uh, but not our production servers because we, we haven't patched them in a while. So, uh, here's this dev server. Can you go out? Attack us just like an attacker would. And that's their scope. And that's totally realistic, because that is exactly the way an attacker is going to attack you within this scope. Well, the state treasury gave me a little bit, shall we say, smaller scope, because I found out that they had an office building, uh, the suite in an office building, 50-something miles away from them. So it had a direct communication into their headquarters. Why do I have to physically be inside the headquarters if I could compromise that suite and actually be log logistically inside their headquarters? So of course, an attacker, liking it the easy way, that's what I'm going after. So they said, sure, Jason, you attack us just like an attacker would. We got some caveats. Can you come in after 5.30 in the evening just to make sure? And also, by the way, uh, talk to no one coming in out of the building because we don't know if they're state employees or not. So you can't contact them. That would be not fair. Um, also, only stay in the public areas if you do get in because, you know, we're only leasing this, this, this building, this, this room. Also, you can talk to the cleaners, but they're not directly our employees, so you can't lie to them. You can only tell them the truth. But heck, Jason, attack us like an attacker would. Well, let's see how that worked out for them. First off, I got onto the scene. 
This is the dreaded Jason Nose Cam. Let's see if we got a video going here. Right. Right. This is. Okay, here I am going up to the front, uh, the side door. I try the door, doesn't work. Effing crowbars weren't on the list of scope, so I'm out of my, my usually basic option. It's like it's either cardboard or crowbars with me. It's, you know, I can get a door open either way. Here's the longest part of the compromise, which I love the best because this is my first uh, Pepsi break. If you'll notice, it's a little shaky. This was off a camera in my watch called my Geek Bling Bling. It looked like a big fancy Rolex thing, but it had a high depth infrared camera on it, 16 gig USB drive. So I wear those on, on engagements. So I go up to the door. It's locked, no effing cardboard. I pull out my hacking device, my cell phone, and I start playing Angry Birds. It only took 10 seconds, because while I'm looking at my phone, I just walked in. <laughs> Notice, at no time did I talk to anybody going in or out of the building. I compromised, in another country, I compromised at least, I think, 12 floors of a high-rise building that had a security doors at every uh, entrance to the elevator lobby. And every single time I was looking at the cell phone down, and as the person came in or the person came out, I just followed in and went in. And that one was even more difficult, okay? Because that wasn't my phone. It didn't have any freaking games on it, okay? So I just elevator scream like I was doing something. That wasn't cool. So now I'm inside. Now, this is the problem here. I'm now inside the building for two hours inside the public area. I had to wait two hours. That doesn't sound like a big deal. You underestimate my ADD, okay? <laughs> There's only so many tweets you can post and Facebooks you can like, okay, and Angry Birds you can flee and stuff, you know, in two hours. So my battery was literally at 2% by the time this engagement was done. Okay, so I'm like waiting and waiting and just finally I hear the vacuum cleaner. It's upstairs, but it's effing close enough. Like I said, two hours left, 2% uh, two, two on the battery. So I go up to the second floor and oops, I just saw that, there we go. And here's the dreaded nose cam again. I can only tell the truth. I cannot lie to this person. Hello. Hi. I'm in uh, trying to get back in the suite. I'm trying to get back in. I was there the day before. That is truth. Did you let me in real quick? Yes. Downstairs? No, no, please. No. Could you let me in? I can't get in. No crowbar. <laughs> like I, I just went to the bathroom. I didn't have my badge. I drink a lot of water. Don't judge me, okay? It's like, but once again, truth. And I don't have my badge. I have an actual authentic employee ID badge. I didn't have it with me. I didn't say it was their badge. Could you, could you try? Thanks, I just... I just gotta do one thing real quick. One thing, destroy their network. There's only one thing. <laughs> Working too late. <laughs> I was working late. I was on the clock, people. And I think that laugh is endearing. Don't judge me. <laughs> Thank you. Try 
gonna jump ahead to save time just a second. Huh? Yeah, I, I don't have the key to get in. Oh yes. yes I, I come in. Go oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> so she goes to get the key. I'm gonna try to jump ahead here. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. And there I am. Hello. Oh. And there I was, inside. It's like I jumped a little ahead, but I want to try to go through it because I can't see it very well. Um, but she came in with the key. The key thing about that was I was on the phone when she was walking up. And as soon as she walked up, I said, uh, oh, no, no, don't worry about it. She's got the key. She'll let me in. Don't worry about that. What does that do? That gives them affirmation that what they're doing is okay because someone else was going to do it anyway and they're saving them the trouble. So even if you're not on the phone, well, you could act like you're on the phone, but if it rings, you're screwed. It's like uh, you could act like you're on the phone and say, you know, oh, don't worry, this person's going to help me out. It's okay. And then just hang up. So the next one we're going to talk about is whatever. I mean, like I said, the, 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 like the, the thing I've done, uh, I've gone in and I've worn a shirt that said I'm a liability on it while I stole a car uh, in Texas. Uh, I've walked into several uh, uh, hotels, uh, barefoot, and pajama bottoms, and T-shirts, because that's funny. Uh, but one of the most ridiculous and unbelievable, I can't believe this worked, uh, engagements was this financial institution in Kingston, Jamaica. Uh, and I refer to this one as Jason, the terrible, horrible, no good, very bad social engineering engagement. This has got to be by far one of the worst, horrible things I've ever done on an engagement, and this is coming from a guy who's used wheelchairs to get into the places he needed to get into, okay? It's like, I mean, this was bad. I felt really bad about this one. So what happened was I would already successfully compromised this financial institution, and on the third day I was supposed to get caught. But what they wanted is something instead. They wanted to challenge me. He's like, we'll try to get down to the headquarters. Downtown Jama Kingston, Jamaica is not like Dun River Falls. It's like they take security a little bit more uh, serious there. So I go and I try to do my research. For an hour and 45 minutes, I do research. And then I find it. They have a charity organization that has the same email address as them. So that means they're on the same network. So that means they're on scope. Scope can be a tricky mother for people, right? It's like, so I go and say, awesome. So I have a, a, uh, my friend, the colleague and stuff, you know, that, that lives in Jamaica. He calls him up as my assistant, gets a hold of the manager. He puts me on the phone with her. Yeah, how's it going? I just, uh, I'm from a, a production company in L.A. We're talking to, to us started last night, and he said that uh, what you were doing, it was just amazing, because I'm doing this TV show on how corporations are doing great works in the community uh, to help better the communities. And y'all, oh my gosh, the work y'all do is awesome. You've got to be on television. i got to get your story out. Uh, i got to fly out at 6 a.m. and stuff, you know, but is there any way that I can meet you before then? 2.30? Uh, okay, let me check, let me check. Hold it. Cancel my three. No, no, this is more important. Cancel my three. I can, I can make it in there. I'll be there. I will see you there. Thanks. You take care. Bye-bye. You know, and I'm there. So I show up at 2.15. It's like, um, so I show up there at 2.15 at the actual corporation's headquarters. There are charity organizations across the street. First thing I do is walk in. It's a man trap. The lobby of the building, the very first lobby before you get into the actual common area of the building, is actually the hugest, most comfortable man traps I've ever seen. It's like there's a receptionist there. You got the door. You got to be buzzed in from the street to get into there. And then there's another door with a security guard who got paid extra to look mean and stuff, you know, standing by that door. And so I go in, I sign in. It's like, oh, that's across the street. Oh, really? That's strange. Um, can I go to the restroom real quick? Because I need to freshen up. It's amazing how many times I have to go to the restroom. It's not because of all the Diet Pepsi. It's because I get lost so many times. I mean, there was one time I was at a research facility. I got lost for over two hours trying to find the bathroom. I never found that sucker. I mean, I found their employee entrance and how to get into their uh, top secret stuff, but I never found the restroom. That stuff eludes me sometimes. So uh, the security guard was nice enough to open the door and walk with me to the bathroom. Well, I really thought he was going into the stall with me. It was, uh, it was a little awkward, okay, even for me. So, uh, so I go in there, and uh, I get in the restroom, and I realize one important fact. 
well, crap, I don't actually have to go this time. So now I've got to wait an appropriate amount of time. Then I've got to wash my hands just to make sure, in case anybody's listening, that they know that I am hygienic. And it's like, and then I go out. And I start to walk out to go the other direction. As soon as I walk out the door, oh, there he is looking right at me. Like, so I go, yes, I was walking right there all the time. It's like, uh, so I go there and I wait. And I talk to the, uh, I finally go over there to the charity organization. I talk to the man, uh, to the lady. I ask her if there's any executives from the company that works here. It's like, oh, the CEO. Oh, the CEO and the board of directors is there. Can I go talk to him? So she lets me talk to him. We go up there to his office. And I start talking to him about a wonderful TV show, a couple of the videos that we've already shown, uh, that we've already made for, uh, from different uh, uh, episodes and stuff. You know, it's like how they're going to love it, how it's going to really get their message out that they're doing such great work. And this lady's not joking. She is literally the Mother Teresa of Jamaica. She gave me her book. It's like, I'm a horrible person. It's like, so, uh, so I go in there talk, talk to him. But after five, ten minutes of talking to him, I go and say, you know what? I could keep babbling all day about how this show is going to be awesome and how it's going to uh, show you in a positive light. But I actually have videos of, of this on my USB drive, Don't Mind the Barber Ducky. Let me plug this in real quick and show you. So I plugged the, the, the device into his computer, and one of the funniest things occurred, I got these weird error messages. I've never gotten this before. I honestly believe that my malware was fighting with the malware that was already on his computer because this guy was totally hosed. I mean, we were like... It was like a malware battle, man. It was like, it was amazing, okay? Air popping up here, but it was like, we didn't know what to do. So I'm like, well, this is odd. This has never happened. It's like, usually I'm the first attacker that does this. But, uh, but no, so it's like, I said, this is odd. What, what can we do? He wants to get his help desk support person in. Well, his help desk support person is, one, got domain admin controls. That's awesome. But, two, a third-party contractor for all these other companies. So out of scope. So I'm like, no, it's fine. You don't have to. I will, I will email you that video. Let me email you the 90% of social engineering for me is thinking on, quick on your feet. It's like, I mean, let, me, uh, let me email you. No, no. He hands it to the uh, help desk guy. That's very important fact, okay? He handed it to the help desk guy. It wasn't me. Not my fault, okay? So he handed it to him. And so I go and say, thinking quick. I go, hey, you know what? There are other movies that have NDA on there and stuff, you know, that I can't share. So I got to go with them to make sure that he's only looking at the video I need you to see. There's no videos. I need to make sure I know which computer was also compromised so I can put it in the report. So I follow the guy to his desk, and lo and behold, he's running Ubuntu. <sighs> Great. I, I coded my uh, my program and stuff, you know, my malware on the drive and stuff, you know, for Windows. That's when I learned that Ubuntu was awesome. It ran perfectly. Pop, 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 command is awesome. It's like he didn't know what he was doing. It's like he didn't know what was going on. And I, I quickly I had the mouse. So I closed that. I was like, I don't know what's going on either. That's, that's strange. Uh, but uh, we can go now because I guess it's not working. So I go back up there. And this is the horrible part. You haven't heard horrible yet. Okay. I spent 15 minutes with truly amazing, wonderful people that are kind hearted, that are selfless that are out there trying to help others in need. And I had to talk to them 15 minutes about how they're going to be on TV. Halfway through, I started believing it. I was going like this. I kid you not. I was like, I caught myself doing this. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to have a lady. She's going to be working at her desk in a cube, like a, like a call center. She'll be working in her cube, working on her computer, and we're going to pan back. And then what we do is we're going to pan across the call center, seeing all the computers. And then right here, we're going to do a transition. That's when one scene goes to the next. We're going to do this transition blur. And now we're on the streets of Jamaica, and there's a hungry child, and there's that same woman that was right there at the computer, that same woman feeding her. So it shows how your work that you're doing in this company actually directly impacts the lives of some of the people. I mean, this would actually be a pretty good show. Y'all should contact me if you want a good production company. So I was, like, really getting into it. And then, I, and then she gave me her book, and it's like, and so I get outside the building, and like I said, I wait two minutes before I go in and tell people they've been compromised. So I get out of the building, and I wait two minutes. And then I wait three minutes. <laughs> then I wait four minutes. And the guy who's driving me around from, you know, compromise to compromise, he pulls up. And he's like, um, aren't you supposed to go in? And I looked at him like... I can't tell those people what I just did. <laughs> I'm a horrible man. <laughs> I 
and for the first time ever, I actually had to call the client in the car going like, yeah, you, you can't make me tell them. I'm not telling them. It's like, <laughs> sorry, that's your job. You're done. I'm, I'm sorry, not doing it. Can't do it. And that's the first time I was not able to tell a client that I compromised him because it really made me sad. Uh, I, usually, I usually reward myself with a good talk or a good compromise with ice cream. I did have ice cream there, but for the record, it was a little bitter. Okay, so I, I did feel bad about that. The summary is this. Did technology fail them? Did training fail them? Human nature failed them. Because we like to believe the unbelievable. Like this guy can get all this money on PayPal for a, a fundraising, right? We like to believe the convenient lie. Instead of inconvenient truth, no relation because, you know, Al Gore already invented that. But it's like, like the internet. Uh, so that's the inconvenient truth is I'm there to do something bad. But if I can give you a convenient lie, make it sound okay, you want to believe that. I am never going to get in a plane crash, right? Because that's the lie I like to tell myself, even though I fly all the time. Because no one wakes up going, yeah, I'm going to work today. I'll probably get shot. You know, it's, uh, it's a bank. They're going to kill me. But, you know, what? hey, well, whatever. It's Tuesday. So... No one wants to think those things because, uh, what's that? They suck, right? <laughs> so let's not think those thoughts. So if I can come to you and say, I need your help to do something, I need you to help me do something, and that's a good thing, then you want to believe that. Otherwise, there's a really horrible bad man taking advantage of me and getting me in trouble and stealing from me and jeopardizing my job. What a crappy guy that is. So it's like, let's watch out for that. So how do we fix it? Uh-oh, vegetable time. It's like, I'm going to be a little bit long. Sorry, Chris, you can already get ready for the sprint and jump on me. Um, we need to do educate, empower, and enforce. That's what I call the three E's. I'm not going to go that long. We don't have to all leave yet. But it's like, uh, but that's what you have to do. You have to educate, empower, and enforce. The first thing is education. And what I talk about education is not those little webinars that you give your people on the internet to go and click and do multiple toys. And they oh, yeah, we passed security awareness training. No, you have to do better. It's like because we need to train them that, yeah, these may be dangerous. Except for that low picture because we're all adorable in there. It's like those may be dangerous, but those aren't usually the main threats. These guys are the main threat. This is where you're going to, especially Darren. He's especially sketchy in that picture. You know, don't love Darren, but yeah, look a little sketchy. It's like those are what's going to get you. That's what's going to compromise, and instead of walking away with a couple of thousand with a gun and a ski mask, you walk away with a couple of million with a USB drive. Because, let's face it, USB drives are awesome. They're awesome. And I don't care about Mr. Robot's method of, like, pulling them, throwing them in the parking garage and parking lot and stuff, you know? Who wants to do that? That was sloppy. I come on an engagement with a stack full of blank envelopes and a marker. I go by someone's desk... There's their name right there on their little name plate, so you know it's their desk. And I got the marker. I write their name down on it. I make sure I spell it correctly. Put a USB drive in the envelope. You know, fill the envelope. And I put that on their desk. Name one person who is not plugging that in. <laughs> Period. Okay? That's how you do that. Talking to, I mean, let's face it, USB drives aren't that expensive. They're giving them out on conferences, you know, all the time. And I'm sorry, this, this slide is a little old because I say they don't have malware on them yet. Uh, no, they do. Sorry, my bad. I should fix that, okay? Um, so that's how easy USB drives are. So what do we need to do? We need to teach employees common dangers they face, not only at work but at home as well, as make them security conscious by default, not by policy. I'm only going to cover one of these topics, but that's one of the important ones right there. Because I got some, this is going to, if there's any CIOs or C-level people in this room, I'm going to come with some startling truth that's going to be shocking to some. Okay, I'm glad you're seated. Uh, if anybody's a C-level, please sit down right there in the back. Um, employees are never going to care about your data. I'm serious. They're never going to care about employee data. They are getting compromised at home by not encrypting their Wi-Fi access points. 
They're getting scammed on Craigslist and phishing emails on eBay. They don't know where their children are commu- or who their children are communicating on Facebook or Twitter, and they don't even have the clue what Snapchat, Instagram, or Kick is. So if they're getting compromised regularly at home because they're not properly trained to be security conscious at home, what makes you think they give a flying f- about the stuff that's happening at work? So my thing is, stop teaching your employees how to protect your data. Stop it. Teach your employees how to securely configure their wireless access points at home. Have a session, a training session to your employees on how to do the Facebook privacy settings. Teach your employees how to check to see what social media is out there and what kids are doing and the dangers of online social media and oversharing. Show your employees how to do proper phishing protection and awareness so they don't get fished at home. And guess what's going to happen? They're still not going to care about your data. (laughs) But they're going to be security conscious because that's the way they are. So when they see something suspicious at work, when they see a phishing email at work, they're going to go, well, I'm not going to fall for this at home. This is definitely sketchy. I wouldn't do this at home. I should contact somebody. That's how you properly secure secure and train your employees. Um, The next one... We go through here. Here we go. The next thing we need to oh, there we go. We need to get, get to the education part. Is teaching a teachable moment. I'll let y'all wonder what that was about. It's like I like to create teachable moments, not just for employees, but for you. We all like teachable moments, right? How do you make an employee have an impact on that? You do this. These are all from conferences I've been at, where right at the beginning of my talk, I threw up a Wi-Fi pineapple. DNS spoofed it, so no internet traffic to it. No one was compromised. I don't do that crap. It's like no one was compromised. It just went to a page that said, oops, not the Wi-Fi access point you were looking for. My bad. And a little winky face on it. So it educate them. But you're thinking, well, Jason, try Wi-Fi pineapples here at DEF CON. And you're right. But that's again, once again, you're thinking that technology is your threat. Technology is not always your threat. I don't wear glasses. How many conversations have I had with you guys throughout the day as I wore these glasses all day? 8 gig USB hard drive with a high def video camera and audio inside them. They are $20 on eBay. That is what we call a teachable moment for you guys. It's that impact that shows a person directly how to be, it affects them, how it impacts them. That's what you have to do with your employees. And I'm so glad I can stop wearing these glasses. They were really annoying me, gosh. All right, so what else do we need to do? We need to empower our people. We need to empower them not just to say, oh, you know, you feel good, you're strong, and doggone it, somebody likes you. No, not like that. We need to show them that they see something, they need to say something. we got to make sure that they understand how to do that. Uh, one of the biggest problems is we need to give your employees a way to be effective and then let them know about it. In other words, when we go in and we tell them if you see someone that's strange, if you see a suspicious email, Do they have a simple extension number they can call or an email address they can send something to to tell them something bad's happening? How many thousands and millions of dollars did that cost versus a blinky box? It's an extension. It's manning that phone that's getting that response. Let them know that that's there and see how quickly they start responding to it and working it. Another thing we need to do is we need to do enforcement. We need to enforce this within our employees. It's like we need to make sure that they understand what they're doing. Well, I think one of the best ways to do that is visibility. Number three, we need to show them that information security teams, that you actually exist. I play a lot of first-person shooters, okay? It's like Unreal Tournament 2004, my main love, okay? I'm playing some COD Modern Warfare, and I play team match, and they hate me. They hate me. You know why? 
Because I'm a running gunner, man. I'm playing the game. Woo! Pew, 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 America! Pew, 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 pew! And I get shot. I die. I respawn. Pew, pew, America! You know? I get like five kills, at least, to my 20, 40 deaths. My team never wins very often. I don't know why. It's like they suck, okay? It's like, so I do that. Attach electrodes to my body that every time I get shot in the game, I get a thousand volt jolt. How's my gameplay going to change? Q. Q Q. America. Q Q. <laughs> it's going to change a little bit, right? Because now there's a real world impact on something that goes online. Make yourself known to your users. Do a password sweep, not online, but on people's desk. Have your security team pick a floor and go through every person's desk and look under the keyboard and on the monitor for passwords written down. First of all, you're going to find it. Two, it's going to let people know that they're actually someone looking for that kind of stuff. How much did that cost you? How valuable is that? So it's like, that's one things you can do. Now the main thing is, and this is my summary, I hated this show. I did. It's like, it's very popular and I started watching it because other people were telling me how awesome it was. I hated this guy. He was a bad guy. Glad he died. Spoiler alert, sorry. It's like, I, he was a horrible person. Why do we uh, glamorize the bad guys? and watch their success while we're the good guys failing. Stop making him happy. Stop making those guys have the good day. Our job is to screw their days over. They need to just, you know, GTFO and dine a fire. So there you go. So that, with that being said, amazingly, because I rushed it because Chris is a meanie, um, I'm done with this part. We got a whole seven and forty-three minutes. I could have rambled at least another hour. <laughs> Which I will be available for questions. And if you want to talk to me or awkward hugs, you can uh, contact me outside, or y'all can scatter to the winds right now. It's all good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.